Good morning. Is it not wonderful to be in the house of the Lord? Right uh, before we open God's word and preach from it, I just want to make three remarks. Right, um, there are people who are contacting our office about the Vision Sunday uh, t-shirts. Please, if uh, you wish to have it, uh, would you contact our office or um, uh, Elga Buchilo? Give her your size and you will get the Vision Sunday t-shirt. The second uh, remark that I wish to make is that we are grateful that the second volume of Daily Inspirational Word will be available next Sunday. And we are so privileged that two of our authors of more than 90 articles for the second volume come from People's Church. Right. And we will be grateful uh, if there are more authors, more writers who are coming on board. I met the CEO of Radio Pulpit, and he says he hasn't seen anything like this in South Africa. Right? So I want to believe that even beyond, far beyond our church, we are blessing people. People are learning to read the Bible on the daily basis. So if you wish to contribute an article in the third and the fourth volume, please uh, do that. Give your name to the office or to Sister Buchilo. But I believe the big project is for next year, where we are going to have only one volume for 365 articles. Now, we are told that Christians are becoming biblical illiterate by day. And this project, this effort is to encourage Christians to read the Bible. May God richly bless you as you are doing that. We're also talking to Radio Pulpit and other media platforms that we should conduct these morning devotions every morning starting from next year. Would you imagine uh, in the morning on the 1st of April, I am John Muhudi. I am from People's Church. Can you, is that not wonderful? And I want to believe that God is blessing this uh, initiative the last remark I wish to make is about the dry fasting. Um, we are all invited. Um, some of you never participated in such a program where we start at 8 in the morning and we're going to end at 4 p.m. The first one that we had a few years ago, um, I was facilitating a prayer point and my throat choked. And somebody was bringing me water. And they said, oh, oh, oh this is dry fasting. <laughs> right? It is somehow, for the first two hours, three hours, it will be like climbing a mountain. But my experience is when we arrive 4 p.m., people don't want to go because of the presence of God. Tony Campolo is an American-Italian evangelical leader. He says, what is important in prayer is not what we say to God or what he says to us. What is important in prayer is the presence of God. The fact that God is there and we are there, it's enough. Jesus spent 40 days, 40 nights praying. Now, I want to believe that he would say everything he wanted to say to the Father. But the fact of the matter is the presence of God is more important than anything as we meet in prayer. I don't know whether you have read or heard Christine Kane. Uh, she's an Australian uh, preacher. And she says, God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. We believe that day, the 9th of April, as we are going to meet from 8 in the morning 
I want to believe extraordinary things are going to descend upon the church. Extraordinary things. I want to believe our world needs prayer than never before. And this is what we are going to do. We are raising our hands. We are saying we are there and we are going to pray together. And she continues um, to say, it doesn't matter who are there. It matters who he is. It matters who he is. And as I've said, you are all uh, welcome to be there. We're going to give special guidelines. There are people who should not go without drinking water for some time. We're going to give uh, some guidelines to people with medical conditions and so on. But the fact of the matter is we have an appointment with God that day and we are going to pray. Right, today is the last Sunday of uh, the month of March and which is our vision month. We cast a vision for this year moving or going to another dimension. So today I wish to uh, conclude our vision month. Our theme is two seasons in one and we are reading Amos chapter 9. If you can, just read from verse 1 to uh, verse 15. I'm going to refer to uh, verses 11 to verse 15. Now, this is the best text in this chapter, but also the book of Amos. Now, it says in verse 11, in that day, I will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up its, his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. Now, God says in verse 11, he tells the prophet Amos, to tell the people of Israel that he will raise up the tabernacle of David. Now, when we read the Bible, um, we read about the house of David or the dynasty of David. This expression, the tabernacle of David, is somehow unusual in the Old Testament. God says, I will raise up the tabernacle of David. Now, the word tabernacle here is used in humble settings. It's not the house. When you say the house of David, or the dynasty of David, it gives an impression that all is well. But the expression, the tabernacle of David, we know very well that the tabernacle was a temporary structure of worship. They were worshiping God, the children of Israel, in the tabernacle before they arrived in the promised land and constructed the temple. So the expression tabernacle of David gives a sense that things were not okay in the dynasty or in the house of David. Now we are curious, we are interested in knowing why is God referring to the house of David as the tabernacle and not as the house of David. Now God gave Amos few visions that are showing the state of the nation of Israel at that time. When we read in chapter 7 verse 1 and 2, Amos sees a vision or a picture, a portrait of grasshoppers or locusts. And these locusts are there, they are attacking vegetation, but they are also attacking their fields. 
So when we read scripture, when you read about locusts or grasshoppers, it's not a very good sign. It's a sign of devastation. It's a sign that the enemy or the devourer is interfering with the lovely wood of people. So Amos sees grasshoppers. He sees locusts attacking the vegetation, attacking the fields, the crops of the Israelites. And we read also in verse 4, Thus hath the Lord God showed unto me, and behold, the Lord God called to contend by fire. Now, fire also is another genre which when we read about in scripture it's about judgment it's about devastation so we can continue and see the state of israel at the time and why is god referring to the house of david not as the house or the dynasty but as the tabernacle of david the last metaphor that we see it is in verse 7 God shows Amos a plumb line. Now, a plumb line was an instrument that was used by builders at that time during those days. It was showing them as they were constructing the straightness of the wall. So whenever you see such a measuring rod, a plumb line, the one who is constructing wants to see, wants to know whether the, what I am building is correct. Now here in verse 7, it shows that the nation of Israel is not in line with God's word. The plan plan shows because the one who uses it is the one who constructs, the one who's in control, the one who is in charge. So the, plum, the, the, the locusts, the fire, and the plumb plan are showing us not all is right, not all is okay in the nation of Israel. And that answers our question. Why is God referring to the house of David? Not as the house of David, but as the tabernacle of David. Not all is well. Their lives metaphorically have been interfered to by the locusts, the fire, and the plumbland is showing. Not all is right. Not all is okay with the nation of Israel. But maybe it refers to the Israelites here. But you know, the word of God is authoritative for faith and life. When I read it today, it is the word of God. It is blessing me. It is encouraging me. It is admonishing me. Maybe here, yeah, referring to the children of Israel, all was not well with them. Maybe as I'm sitting today, deep down in my heart, I know not all is well in my life. Not all is well in my own situation. Now let's see what God says in that particular situation. Verse 11, God says, I will raise up his ruins. God is saying, Israel, you are not where you're supposed to be. Israel, you are not a tabernacle, but you are a dynasty. You are the house of David. God says, I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. In other words, I will restore the kingdom i will restore the dynasty i will restore the house of david as it was in the days of old god is
is in the business of renewal. God is in the business of restoration. When the dynasty, when the house, when a life, it's not where it's supposed to do. In Isaiah 43 verse 19, behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The message that we have today is that when things are not okay, when the life of a person is where it's not supposed to be, God says, I will raise up the ruins. God says, I will pick up the house of David. This is in line with our theme. Vision 2022. This is in line with our intentions this year. We have tarried long in this situation. Let us break camp. Let us move to another dimension. In other words, what we are saying in line with our message for today is that if we are not where God wants us to be, we will be uncomfortable. We will move to be where God wants us to be. Now, verse 13, for the sake of clarity, I'm going to read it in few translations. New King James Version. Behold, now God tells the nation of Israel through Amos, and I believe God is saying this to us. God is saying this to my life and to your life and to your situation and circumstances. God says in the New King James Version, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the trader of grapes him who sows seed. The mountains shall drip with sweet wine and all the hills shall flow with it. In the New English translation, be sure of this, the time is coming. It's not a man who is speaking, but it is God. The time is keeping. You know, Matebula, Date Matebula, Tatana Matebula. My life, my being blessed doesn't depend on your opinion. It doesn't depend on what people think about you. When God says it will happen, it will happen. When God says I will bless, it doesn't matter people's opinions. So God speaks here. When the plowman will catch up with the reaper and the one who storms the grapes will overtake the planter, Jews will run down the slopes. It will flow down all the hill sides. Lastly, in the Message Bible, yes, indeed, it won't be long now. God decree. Things are going to happen so fast your head will swim. Wow. One thing fast on the heels of the other. You won't be able to keep up. Everything will be happening at once. And everywhere you look, blessings. Wow. Blessings like one pouring off the mountains and hills. I'll make everything right again for my people Israel. And I, give, I believe these translations are adding a dimension or a perspective to what God is saying to us today. Now, in the Message Bible, it says, things are going to happen so fast, <laughs> your head will swim. One thing fast on the heels of the other. Now, your head swimming is an idiomatic expression. 
It means you will be overwhelmed. It means you won't be able to keep up with what God will be doing. If I have a glass of water and a jar and I put water in the glass, it can be half full. That's how people prefer their life to be. But I can fulfill the glass to the brim. That's not God's will about my life. It's not God's will about your life. This is God's will. When you pour the water, even if it's full, it will overflow. It is the will of God. I should overflow. Now, people, people are saying, you know, I cannot cope with the situation. I have, I have one challenge after the other. I am overwhelmed. Now, the word of God here says, no, we are not going. Yeah, we will have our, our dose of those challenges. But what the Lord is saying here, actually one version says, you'll be dazed. You will be dazed. You will not. You will just be overwhelmed. You will be bewildered by what, will, what God will be doing in your life. This is what the Lord says to us and to our lives today. In short, God is saying you are going to have two seasons in one season. God is going to do it. God is going to overwhelm us. We know the seasons of the year. When autumn comes, it comes. And when it ends, it, we have another season starting. Winter and then summer, whatever season. You can't have two seasons in one. But God is saying here, the way I'm going to raise you up from your ruins, you are going to have two seasons in one. The plowman will overtake the reaper. In other words, when they are reaping, the plowman will be saying, you're wasting my time. I want to start plowing. I want to start sowing. You are going to have two seasons in one. God is saying you will be overwhelmed. Your life will never be the same. We are going as a church. We are going to have two seasons in one. When the plowman overtakes the reaper, when the treater of grapes will overtake him um, who sows. Now, I am, I am bewildered by what God says here to Amos. He says, the mountains shall drip with sweet wine. The hills shall flow from it. What does this mean? Now, if you go to Israel, they don't plant they don't grow grapes in the mountains, in the hills. No. They grow grapes. The vine where it is flat. The mountains are not appropriate for the grape or the wine farmer. But God says here, even... Those unexpected places you are going to have when God pours a blessing upon a church. When God pours a blessing upon a life, upon a relationship, upon a career, we are going to expect blessings where they are least expected in other words even the mountains are going to drip not with wine but with new wine people who are not expected to bless you they are going to bless you the wine will be overflowing even from the mountains the prophet Elijah is fed by the ravens. If you know the ravens, they are birds 
omnivorous birds who feed on anything. How can a raven feed a person if it is not God? You will be fed. You will be blessed from unexpected quarters. The Lord is going to bless us. The Lord is going to stretch forth his favor upon us. Even from unexpected quarters. From unexpected people. This is what the prophecy says over here. Now, um... We confuse blessings. We confuse an event of blessing with the process. And I think it's very clear here. It's very clearly stated in this text. The mere mention of the plowman, the reaper, the treater, the planter means there is still work to be done. The planter should plant. The reaper should reap. The sower should sow. Which means that when Brother Eugene receives something, it appears like a blessing. It appears like an event. But actually it is a process. You don't know his life. You don't know his prayer life. You don't know what he's sowing. You don't know his relationship with God. So we are tempted to say to think blessing is an event. But it is a process. And in most cases, Christians are not schooled in understanding the processes of God. They want an event. Yeah, every, everybody wants to be blessed. Everybody wants to go to, to receive good things from God. But we must learn that these things are happening as a process. John Maxwell wrote a book, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. And I think it is the third law. The next law, he says... It is the law of process. Christians overestimate the event and undermine the process. We, we like events. When we have a successful meeting, when we have growth in the church, it's more than an event. It is God responding to a process. We are looking for quick microwave fast food success and solutions rather than process. We want God to do things. Yeah, God will do them. But it is a process. We must understand how God works. God works within certain parameters. God works within certain processes. Events motivate people, but process matures people. You will be matured. Why? Because you are involved in that process. And you are growing. You understand how God works. How God doesn't work. So an event, a blessing, it's good. But it is part of what God is doing as far as process is concerned. I think we must have a workshop on event and process. Events motivate people. Okay, the, an event is a calendar issue, but process is a culture issue. An event, it's, it's something that you can put. But culture, culture means this is our lives. This is how we do things. In this church, it's culture. It should be culture that we don't pay lip service to prayer, but we actually pray. It's culture. God works within processes. An event challenges people, but process changes people. A process changes us. Why? Because we are involved in what? When we are praying, when we are fasting, when we are going out to do outreach and evangelism, God changes us. We become changed people all together. 
John Wooden says, success travels in the company of very hard work. There is no trick, no easy way. When you read in Amos chapter 9, God says, I'm going to bless you. Your head will swim. One thing will. But then this, this is process. The, the presence of the plowman. It means even when God says that, you still have to plow. When God says, I will do this. It means you should still do what you are supposed to do. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> I want to believe that we are, we are as individuals and collectively as the church, candidates of being blessed by God. We are, I believe, each and every one of us, without exception, I want to believe that what the Word of God says to us today, that you are going to experience two seasons in one, it's going to be a reality. It's going to happen in our lives as individuals, but also collectively as the church. What are you saying, Pastor? What I'm saying is this, when a vacancy is advertised when you apply it either uh, a paper or electronically god says it's already yours it's already granted to you this is what the word of god says when we set ourselves to pray even before we pray god has already answered <laughs> we're going to experience Two seasons in one. Let's stand on our feet. I want to believe that God honors what we say. But God also honors our deep convictions. God honors our faith. It's not only statements that we are making, but we are convinced. We are convicted that this year we are going to experience two seasons in one. There is power in words. The words that we say, the words that we con first. There is power in that. And I want to believe as we are standing on our feet, we have heard the word of God and we want to accept what the word of God says to us. Our response to God's word today, I wish us to confess I wish us to decree what was preached today will be applicable in my life. The Bible says what we bind here on earth is bound in heaven. What we lose here on earth will be loosed in heaven. I want us to confess collectively what God says will happen in my life this year. Are you ready to confess? Are you ready to declare? Are you ready to decree? I'm going to say something. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I don't know where you feel it over there, but I feel it yes, over Lord, here. Yes, Lord. I'm going to confess some words. Yes, These are not empty words. This is the word of God. And I believe that I'm going to experience two seasons in one. This year.
I'm going to say a statement. I'm not sure whether. Yes, uh, I think you will be able to read. God will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Praise the name of God. If you can, you must say, maybe deep down in your heart, not to disturb your neighbor. I receive, I receive, I receive. I receive, I receive, I receive, I receive in my mind, I receive in my heart. God says, I'm blessed coming in and going out. I receive. God says, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. God says, I'm an apple of God's eye. I am untouchable. I'm unstoppable. I am unshakable. God says, I'm not beneath, but I'm on top. God says, I am the head and not the tail. God says, I am the righteousness of God. God says, I'm not a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror. God says, I can do everything through Christ who strengthens me. Let's go ahead and pray. Let's go ahead and receive from the heart of God. Just open up. Open your mouth. mouth. Open up. Even those decrees uh, that we have not made, uh, actually, we believe, oh God, uh, for our lives. Uh, we believe, oh God, uh, for our families. Uh, we believe, Father Lord God, we have received from you. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Maybe let's have the worship team sing a song. And the after we'll conclude in prayer. Blessed be the name of the Lord.